All right, here are some students that were asking for some help on factoring, and so I just wanted to make sure that we kind of talk about um, some factoring. If you had any questions, I can show you a few different ways to do this. So this was the question that was asked about. All right, and I'm going to come back to this in just a minute because I want to have you look at something like this first, right? So when it's asking us to factor this trinomial, and our leading coefficient is a one, right? So this is just a one here in front of it, All right? We can go straight to these parentheses. We don't need to do anything else if that's a one, if that coefficient's a one. And so then we just ask ourselves, what times what is x squared? Well, that will be x times x. So that goes in the first part of each of those parentheses. And then we look to see what multiplies to be negative 12 that adds to be positive 1. So the coefficient on this one is a 1 as well. All right, so what multiplies to be negative 12 that adds to be positive 1? Well, you could write these out, you know, just work organized and think, Okay, so I'm thinking of 12. Well, I know that 1 times 12 is 12, and then 2 times 6 is 12, and then 3 times 4 is 12. Notice how I was working organized, starting with 1 times something, see if there was 2 times something, then 3 times something. And since these guys are one number right after each other, then I know I have all of my factors that are possible. And so when I look at this, what multiplies to be negative 12 that adds to be positive 1? Well, it's going to be this one, right? Because I'm asking myself, could they add or subtract to be, um, to add up to be that 1? Well, if this was a negative 3 and a positive 4, all right, negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12, and negative 3 plus 4 gives me positive 1. So that's my winning combination, and that's what I'm going to be using in here. So I'll have x minus 3 and x plus 4. And then that's done. That is completely factored there. Okay, however, this one is different, and we're going to have to go about factoring it in a little bit of a different way because notice that our leading coefficient this time is not a 1, it's a 2. And so we've got to take that into account before we can do um, the factoring here. So instead of asking ourselves what multiplies to be negative 15 that adds to be negative 1 there, right? we've got to multiply those numbers together first. Let's see, I'm going to keep this the same. So I'm going to say my, so 2 times negative 15, all right, so 2 times negative 15 gives me negative 30. So I'm multiplying those two together. And then I'm trying to think what multiplies to be negative 30. So I'm just going to kind of list out all my different possibilities here on it. And again, I don't usually work, worry about that negative until later. Remember over here, I just listed out everything that multiplied to be 12. And then I asked myself, okay, if I add or subtract those together, will it give me that middle number? Okay, so on this one, let's just kind of do 30 to start off with. So I'm going to start with 1, 1 times 30, all right? And then 2, 2 divides into it evenly, 2 times 15 is 30, 3 divides into it also, 3 times 10 is 30, 4, um, doesn't divide into 30, but 5 does. 5 times 6 is 30. All right, and so now I'm looking at this. Notice that I know that I have all of my factors here because um, 5 and 6 are a number right next to each other. There's no other numbers in between there that I can look at, all right? So, so I know that's not going to be something that, you know, I need to look for more factors or anything. Okay, but I do see if I subtract these, that I will end up with that negative 1. But then I need to ask myself, okay, which of these numbers needs to be positive? Which one needs to be negative? Well, I need a negative 6, right? Because remember, 5 plus negative 6 
gives me a negative 1, which is what I'm looking for here. And then 5 times negative 6 gives me that negative 30 that I was looking for up here. Okay. All right, so that winning combination is what we need. But we can't just put it in parentheses like we did over here. I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can work this out. Okay, so the first way I'm going to show you is called factor by grouping. Okay, so you did this before. Um, if you have a four-term polynomial, you'll usually factor it by using factor by grouping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this three-term polynomial into a four-term polynomial. So let me go ahead and rewrite this down again. So this is what I started with. All right, but now instead of having negative x in the middle, remember I said 5 minus 6 gives me that negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite this. This 2x squared stays the same. But here I'm going to have a negative 6x and a positive 5x. And I could have put it either way. I could have written it as plus 5x and then minus 6x. It doesn't matter which way I write those. Okay, so don't get caught up on that. That will be just fine. And then I need to bring down that negative 15 also. All right, so now I've made it into a four-term polynomial. So to do factor by grouping, I look first of all to see if there's a greatest common factor that can come out of everything, and there's not. So then I break it in half here, and I look and see, okay, what's the greatest common factor that I have with these first two terms? Well, 2 and x, all right? can divide out of both of these terms. And when I divide those out, I'm left with an x here and left with a negative 3 here. Okay. And then let's do the same thing over here, looking at the 5x minus 15. Well, the greatest common factor is a positive 5 that can come out. And again, our leftovers, so if I divide this by 5, I'm left with x. If I divide negative 15 by 5, I get negative 3. All right, so now we should notice that these guys are the same. All right, and if they're not the same, then you've probably done something wrong um, in what you picked up there. They need to be the same. So that means that x minus 3 is one of my factors. And then my other factor comes from what's left over there. So 2x plus 5 is my other factor. All right, and if I FOIL this back out, right, if I multiply those back together, I'll end up with what I started with. And so that's just a good way to check that you did your factoring correctly, is by FOILing or multiplying that back out. Okay, so that is factor by grouping, right? That is a way that a lot of people like to do it. Another way is called the box method. And it's really similar to what we just did, but it gives it more of a visual feel to it. So we still go through the same steps that we did here, right? What multiplies to be negative 30. We find that this is the winning combination that we need. But now I'm going to write it in a box instead. Okay, so it's just kind of the setup of it that's a little bit different. But if you're a visual learner, it kind of helps you out. So that first term, that 2x squared, goes in one box, all right? And then, I mean, it's going to really, I'm going to be putting the stuff from this line in there. So I'm going to have negative 6x, right? Because that was one of my um, winning combination numbers, positive 5x. And then I still have that negative 15, all right? Do you see that all of these numbers or all of these terms are right here in this box. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter where I put that negative 6x and 5x, they could be on either of those diagonals, okay? But now I'm just looking for greatest common factors in both directions. So if I'm looking, first of all, at this row, 
and I say, okay, what's the greatest common factor between these two terms? Well, that's 2x. And it can't be negative 2x because they're not both negative. If they were both negative, then I'd factor out a negative with it. Okay, down here with my 5x and negative 15, 5 is what's in common, greatest common factor there. Okay, now let's look at the columns. So looking at this, well, 2x squared and 5x, the only thing they have in common is just x. And then in this column, six, negative 6x and negative 15, well, 3 will divide into both of those numbers, right? And they're both negative, so that means it's going to be a negative 3. So I can see here that, again, my answer that I come up with is the same that I had over here. So this is one of my factors, x minus 3. And then what I have here down the side, right? And since that was a positive 5, it's going to be a plus there. So 2x plus 5. All right, so one last method I want to tell you about is called the bot, or sorry, is called synthetic factoring. And it's probably my favorite way to factor, but some people don't like it, and that's okay. That's why I like that there's so many different methods that you can choose from. And really, I'd say try and stick with one method that has that's working for you and keep going with that. Otherwise, you might get some of the methods mixed up. But you might need to try out a few different methods first to see which ones you like best. All right, with synthetic factoring, you again, you start off the same way that we did these other two, where we're multiplying, right, that 2x, or sorry, the 2 and the negative 15. So what multiplies to be negative 30, that adds to be negative 1, right? So what multiplies to be negative 30, that adds to be negative 1 is what we were trying to find. All right, and we said, okay, that winning combination was 5 and negative 6. Okay, so this is how we do synthetic factoring. So I want you to write the 5, and then over here, what a ways, put the negative 6. And then we're going to actually make this into a fraction. Okay, and the number that goes in the denominator is found by looking at this leading term here, right? So that, and we're going to use that 2x. So what I'm going to do with that 2x is I'm going to put it on the denominator here on both of these fractions. Okay, and I know sometimes people are like, oh, fractions, okay. These aren't scary fractions, I promise. It's just the way that this is set up to kind of keep it um, organized. Okay, so then you want to look and see, are there any, um, is there anything that can reduce in either of these fractions? Well, there's nothing in 2x and 5, right? There's no common factors there that can reduce. And so we can write that out as one of our terms. So we write the 2x, whatever's on the bottom there, and since it's a positive 5, we'll put plus 5, All right? And remember, that is one of these terms that we already said was in our answer. Okay, and then the other one we need to look at and say, okay, well, this one can reduce, right? I can see that 2 will divide into 2 one time and into this, right, three times. So then what am I left there with is x minus 3 is my other one that's left there, right? So x is all that's left with on the bottom, and I'm left with that negative 3 on the top. And then, again, that is done. So that is the answer. Okay, so three different methods that you could use. Like I said, like you can try each of these out, see which one you like best. And then if you have more questions on factoring, please reach out to me. Factoring is probably the most important skill that you should get from this class because you're going to keep needing to use that over and over and over. And as you have gotten into um, the next section or the next module, right, into module six, you'll see, oh, wow, we are using a lot of factoring here. Okay. All right. I hope that was helpful for you.